Welcome back to the Smith Euro YouTube channel. Today, what we're going to be doing is all the necessary modifications to make this AHU Mark III TDI engine fit into our Mark I Caddy truck. First, I'll just go over the list of parts, stuff that we're going to need. Uh, you can reuse the 020 trans off of the original uh, Mark I stuff if you want, but who wants that if you're going to a nice modern well it's not really modern anymore but it's a lot more modern than that uh nice new modern engine you might as well get the transmission off of it you get better highway uh gearing mileage all that kind of stuff and we're also going to be converting it to a o2j shifter uh, that'll be in another video but yeah so since we are using that that's an o2a o2j it's pretty much the same except you just have to drill out these bolts if you have an O2J because they're threaded and not uh, all the way through. To take care of the trans mount side, I got this stuff from Tech 53, which is a pretty good company. Very nice design piece. I did not get um, I did not get poly bushings for this. I wanted to get OEM mounts because uh, OEM mounts last a long time. So an original Mark 1 engine mount or transmission mount fits in here. It's 64 millimeters, but an original trans mount is really hard to find. So this is a um, so if the last the last letter in the part number uh, OEM one would be a D. This one was an H. I don't really know the difference, but that the H was available and I was able to get it same day, so I got that. And um, one thing that'll mess people up is installing the mounts. So. Both of these mounts, if they were, if they're to be installed, just think of um, sky here, floor or ground here. So you want the lower side because these mounts are offset. So if this was flipped the other way, the hole would be up here. Same over here, the hole would be up here. So this is how uh, they should be mounted with the offset facing straight down to the ground on both sides. Uh, one note is that the the trans mount, this is gonna go around the diff, and then it's gonna mount to the original factory Mark I mount, and then the Mark I mount to the chassis, it's right here. So that's all gonna be retained. Same with the front O2O trans mount, that's gonna be reused, that'll go where the starter is, right, right about here. It'll come out, that's the snub mount. That's needed as well and that's what this is just uh, when you install it in the car I usually leave this completely attached and then you can just bolt that up later it's a lot easier to just put it in with the engine the uh, front engine mount this will go somewhere about here we're gonna have to cut this cover to mess with the timing belt get it behind there but this mount is an OEM mount so it comes from any um, any mark one eight valve uh, gas engine so yeah. so you can see that it's a lot smaller if you were to use your TDI bracket engine mount bracket it actually holds the mount for your injection pump here's here's the gas mount here's the diesel mount you can see it holds up to the injection pump now what some people do is just lop it off right there but uh, that's a good used part and I can probably sell it keep it whatever I decide uh, I'm just gonna leave it as is this cost me about uh, I think it was like 15 bucks for that amount of money uh, you might as well save that because that's a lot more so that takes care of all that the very last thing you need to put this into a mark one chassis is probably the most important hard part to find is a 12 valve VR6 water pump pulley see the part number right here it's 021-145-255A so these only come on 12 valves a 24 valve is way different and I'll show you right here I have a 24 valve one and you can see it kind of has a step up so you can only use a 12 valve one the reason why we need this and then I have a small belt this is a 1040 millimeter belt hopefully it's right I think it's right but um, the reason behind this is we have to delete a lot of stuff. Mark 1s usually come with 
manual steering. That's what the truck has and that's what we're keeping. So since it has manual steering, uh, we can obviously delete the power steering pump off of here. And now this truck does have AC, but how they are mounted on these AHUs, it's a lot further forward. AC compressor would actually hit the front uh, nose and you would have to chop it out. We're not that worried about it. We have vent windows and a rear sliding window on the truck. So we're not gonna be messing with AC. So AC gets deleted, power steering pump gets deleted along with the bracket. This front pulley off the crank is gonna get deleted as well. And then we will take the water pump pulley off and then this will go in its place. And then when that's in, we'll be able to just run a single belt off of this tensioner. So it'll just come around, pull the water pump, and you'll be good to go. We have a lot more stuff that we have to strip off of here, like the original Mark III rear engine mount, along with the trans mount as well. And then we'll get all, all the stuff on there. Yeah, so we'll get to it now. Best thing about having a truck, you got a nice workbench right here. So the pulley's basically riding um, at the point where I can't really do anything about it. I guess you would probably uh, have someone lathe off a little bit of this and then it wouldn't hit, but can't do it right now. Now we can get to the engine mount, obviously pop off the cover. We know everything fits with the belt and all, so we're gonna take the stuff back off and then we gotta pull the timing cover off because we have to get uh, there should be a hole behind this dowel. This dowel has to come out. And I think there's another bolt hole. We'll see, but we have to get this uh, upper timing cover off. So we gotta pull the whole timing assembly off. We'll just mark the belt and reset it where it was because it was a good running car. So we'll pull that off. We'll clean everything up while we're in here. So let's uh, tear everything apart. Okay guys, so I didn't want to take this uh, cover off because I don't have all the tools here with me right now. So I don't want to retime everything because if you break this loose, then it's free floating and you have to then take the valve cover, lock the cam, lock this. So I just marked everything. This is probably the best way for most of you guys to do it at home. So there's usually a, a ridged area, it comes right down here. You see where the gold mark is. So this ridged area on the timing cover, I marked it and then I cut it with a, like a cutoff wheel. And then, so I cut it off like that and then I went all the way down like that and then I used a flat disc to grind it flat. And my thought and plans are, this thing's pretty flimsy and um, if you leave these loose, they'll make a bunch of noise and hit the belt. So why I only cut this off instead of this entire square was that it would be flapping here, here, and all around. So I figured if I take this off, this mount will now hold the timing cover on. 
And then now this bolt hole is not drilled in this cover. This one has a long like rivet thing. I cut that off and broke it free in the back and uh, knocked it out. All these bolt holes are M8 by 125. So I have a tap and I've cleaned them out. So I, ha I can put a bolt in here, but I have these two bolts lining me up right here. So now all I have to do is just mark this and drill it and then I'll have the hole. I'll drill a little bit bigger obviously. And you can see this is a raised section. So I will have to find a couple washers that'll fit behind here and take up the slack. Uh, that's probably the only downside to this is I'll have to have washers back there. But what I'll do is I'll put silicone on the back of them. So they should stay with the mount whenever I do uh, time belt or if someone else happens to have it in the future. So yeah, I'm gonna get back to this. I didn't record that simply because I didn't want to mess up the camera. I didn't want to get sparks all over it. With the mount, I got two slightly longer bolts and it's a combination of two washers. I have a stainless steel washer and a VR6 manifold washer. You see it's like kind of thick. It takes up the perfect space. So I'm going to glue these and put them on the back and then bolt it on and hopefully it will never move again. But you can see I have... Um, I egged that out and I drilled the hole, retapped that, so now everything should just go on, no problem. I'm gonna start with these two bolts. Alright, so now that everything's in, you can see kind of how the washers are behind there and everything's good so now we can just put the timing stuff back on and finish cleaning up Time cover's on, belt, this whole front assembly's done, motor mount is on. So this is where the uh, chassis bolt will go through. It goes through from this side and I'll have to sit in there. I think I cut enough off, it should be good. I literally just cut that little section off and a uh, little round part here. I did it over on the bandsaw. So this is all good to go, it's all back in time. So now we can move on to trans mount adapter kit from the Tech 53. For this front snub mount, it's really as easy as this where you pull the front bracket off, get two nuts. You can either use the ones from your engine you just pulled the mount off of or just get some ones, get M10 by 1.5. Push bolts here. All right, so that's bolted in place, as you guys can see. Using the original starter bolts, Good to go. So now we'll move on to this back mount for mounting an O2A into a Mark 1. Okay, so this mount goes on right here. You can see there's this uh, raised edge that goes into this little cutout. So there's three of these bell housing bolts. You just run them out. This one, this one, this one. And unfortunately, they give you uh, like zinc bolts, which aren't the greatest, but you have to have something that's fully threaded because it's literally, it's going through like that. And then they're putting this really big uh, nut washer or whatever, that'll go on the backside of it. So just gotta get that on now and then we'll move on to the other mount. So I see why they give you these kind. So I guess you gotta kinda run them in. 
They like just fit. Yeah, basically. I don't know how you're supposed to get a socket on them. We're gonna have to do it with a wrench. Mm. I feel like they should have had just spacers and that would have like came out to here or something. Or bolted something like this onto the back of it. Yeah. Alright, so I'll just tighten these until they're tight and then we'll go on to the other one. So we have the mount to put on. And unfortunately they didn't give me any bolts. So I have two of my own bolts. This one, this one has a stud on it because you need it for the ground wire off the battery. So put it on just like that. Set this one bolt. And they have this little spacer that you gotta um, fish in with it. And you just fish it in like that. Fish that in again. Right, so that's on there and then this is the gonna be the clutch cable bracket. I think it goes this way So this is how I'm gonna put it in for now It's gonna go in like that All right guys, so this is the last piece Everything's on the engine is now ready to drop into the truck. I'm gonna take some miscellaneous stuff off whatnot, but um that, That's obviously not video stuff but here's how the uh, clutch cable part looks coming through. Obviously, you gotta kinda fine tune it. But you can see all the mounts are in place. Place, in place. This, the, uh, the lower bolts, this mount, uh, I'm gonna get in there and I'm just gonna have it in loosely. I hope it should be able to be done in the car. But, and then also guys, I didn't tighten this yet. Um, because the next video will be the O2J shift conversion. So I'm going to be putting a box, a shifter box with cables but from over here. That's going to go in the truck as well as the shift tower. And I'll walk you guys through that stuff. So if you want to um, check that video out, make sure to um, subscribe. That way you can get the notifications on it. And um, yeah, thank you guys for watching and see you guys in the next one. This uh, should be in the truck pretty soon. Thank <laughs> you.